So let's say you start playing Dungeons and Dragons. You're having fun. It's just playing make-believe with your friends that is fun. The actual game system of Dungeons and Dragons is terrible. Yeah, yeah, 5th edition's better. It's still a pretty bad game. Now, if you're one of the creative nerdy types, you'll go, I'll make my own role-playing game system. And odds are, if you've only played Dungeons and Dragons, you're not aware of the huge range of systems that resulted from just that. And of course, one of the first targets for you is levels. Levels are terrible, they make no sense. So instead, you cobble together a piecemeal progression system based on using your abilities. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. Every single RPG nerd has gone through that. And every single one of them makes the exact same mistakes with the RPG system that they design. And that's how you get Final Fantasy II. There's been a lot of talk over the years that Final Fantasy II is the worst game in the series. And that's kind of harsh. It's a throwback to Final Fantasy I, but it's still a good effort for an early Super Nintendo game. Wait, we're talking about the other Final Fantasy II. The Famicom Final Fantasy II really does have that bad of reputation, though. And not for the usual reasons that Final Fantasy games get bad reputations. Final Fantasy II is despised because of the terrible game mechanics. On the other hand, Final Fantasy II is where a lot of the foundational things for the Final Fantasy series come from. The story has an evil empire out to conquer the world, and at the outset, the village that your four heroes live in is attacked. You're dropped into a hopeless battle, and then once you're defeated, you recover but you're missing one of your friends. And that begins a long chain of quests for you. An odd mechanic that the game seems to borrow from Ultima 4 is keywords. In some conversations, people will mention a word, and you can choose to remember that, and then when you repeat that word to some people, it triggers additional dialogue. So after the lengthy introduction sequence, you go get your starting equipment, and then we get into the stuff that people hate. Final Fantasy II dropped the concepts of levels and experience points. And here's the thing. Levels aren't realistic, and they are pretty limiting, but they're very convenient as a game mechanic. You've got a threshold that you're trying to achieve, and then once you surpass it, you get something extra. And in a role-playing game, they ensure that a character has certain tiers of power. Your party should be level 12 before doing this dungeon, for example. The first thing that a game designer does if they are chafing under that restriction, though, is basically make everything its own level. If you want to get better at using swords, fight a lot with swords. And if we were only talking about that kind of ability, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Final Fantasy II extends that philosophy to everything. If you want to have higher hit points, you need to get hit. And similarly, your equipment affects how your stats improve. It results in some perverse incentives. You want to get attacked and hit, so that you're better at getting attacked and hit by the tougher monsters. The most efficient way to improve abilities is to just attack your own party. Keep blasting yourselves with magic so that you're improving both the magic points, spellcasting ability, and magic defense of your crew. Beating yourself up is how you get better in this game. But that's not all. Final Fantasy II doesn't close off any development paths for any character. Everybody can learn everything, and after about 20 minutes of grinding this out, any starting differences are smoothed over. Now the intention in this kind of system is that a character will specialize. Do one thing pretty well, do another thing okay, but the nature of the game discourages specialization. Are you facing a lot of enemies that don't take much physical damage? Well, everybody better know some good magic spells then. You don't ride out those segments. You just do a lot more grinding in advance of them. And I mean a lot more. You need to grind up magic ability for each spell individually, grind up ability for each weapon, grind up the stats to use those effectively, grind up your hit points, grind up your magic points, Grind up your defensive abilities. Technically, you can just charge ahead and accept what comes. But in practice, grinding is easier, even though that grinding is much more time-consuming. 
And there's another problem with this. The game can't scale its challenges properly. In a standard level-based RPG, obviously you can grind a bit to build up some power. But there's also diminishing returns. You might be willing to stick around and kill a hundred slimes to reach level 5, but killing thousands of them to reach level 10 isn't likely to happen. Here, progress is completely disconnected from the difficulty of the challenge. Fighting the monsters you encounter outside the first town gets you the same character progression as fighting monsters in the final dungeon. The only difference is the cash reward. So why wouldn't you level up your abilities as much as you can? And once you've done that, it trivializes the rest of the game. There's one more issue with all of this. Your fourth party member slot gets rotated in and out a lot as you progress through the game. And that character is never up to snuff compared to the rest of your team. Now that's a lot of complaining about the utterly broken game mechanics. But what about the rest? Well, Final Fantasy is probably the best structured story and adventure we've seen in an RPG on the Famicom so far. The only thing even comparable is Dragon Quest III. And I like the dungeons and adventure more in Final Fantasy II. The problem is those game mechanics render this just about unplayable. Final Fantasy II has been remade multiple times. The PlayStation version is likely the one that most people first encountered. But I actually think the PlayStation Portable is the best way to experience this one. The thing is, Final Fantasy II is a game that people only play to say that they've done it. You play it so you can say that you've played all of the Final Fantasy games. It's really not worth going back to this one. And fortunately, Square would rebuild everything from the ground up for Final Fantasy III.